In this video, I'm going to teach you step by step all of the SEO strategies we use to increase a client's traffic by 3000%. My name is Matt Diggity and I'm a director at the Search Initiative, an SEO agency that specializes in cutting edge SEO. And I'm about to give out the farm on some of our best SEO techniques. Not too long ago, I published a video case study of how we made nearly a million dollars with an affiliate website. And it blew up. So I thought it'd be a good idea to show you how to get some awesome results with client SEO on a limited budget. We're going to do a walkthrough of the actual tactics that we use to get the following results. Let's take a look at the case study first though. The client's website was in the marketing services industry in the US. And the challenge was real. The client had close to zero search traffic at the beginning of the campaign and had desires of reaching at least 20,000 visitors per month. And our biggest concern was if we could even find the keyword search volume to hit this goal. But we did. And here's the traffic growth eventually breaking through 20,000 per month. And here's how many keywords we got to the top three positions in Google. 495 when we started with only 18. And we're about to get into all the strategies that cause these gains. I'm going to break things down in this video into three main sections. First, I'll get into a content strategy that's absolutely crucial for any site and in any niche. Then I'll get into some technical SEO strategies that you'll want to start today. And lastly, I'll drop some strategies for every SEO's favorite topic, backlinks. But before I do that, I'd like to ask if you would drop some love on that like button. It's had a bad day and YouTube will hate me if it stays in this sad condition. But in all seriousness, it helps my channel out a ton, so I'd appreciate the help. Thanks a bunch. The first thing we did in the content category was work on establishing topical authority. Topical authority is a super hot topic right now in SEO and for due reason, because it works. You see, just because you wrote a single piece of content on something doesn't mean you're an expert in it and deserve to rank. For example, if you have a website on music, writing one article on turntables doesn't make you David Guetta. You need to cover more pieces on turntables and answer more questions on it before Google will see you as a turntable expert. And after you create those articles, you need to interlink them together in an intelligent fashion. Here's how you can start to create topical relevance for a keyword like turntables. First, plug your main keyword into Ahrefs Keyword Explorer. In the section underneath, you'll see various keywords and their parent topics. Here's an interesting keyword with a difficulty of one that we could write about. So let's create a page on best pioneer turntables. Next, write the article. I highly recommend using a tool like Surfer's Content Explorer, which will reverse engineer the articles already ranking on page one and give you a framework to make yours even better. Now it's time to write on some of the subtopics for the supporting articles. Ahrefs Keyword Explorer also gives you a section that shows the search results for your keyword. You can then explore the top pages of these sites one by one to get keyword ideas. Make sure to set the filter to only get relevant keywords for your silo. And then after you've written a few of these bad boys, it's time to start interlinking them together. Link your supporting articles like Vintage Pioneer Turntables and How to Repair Your Pioneer Turntable to your main Pioneer Turntable article. Make sure the links are contextual. What I mean by that is that the links occur from a paragraph within the article, as opposed to a link from the sidebar or the footer or even an image link. The Reasonable Surfer patent says that certain links carry more of a punch depending on where they're placed, and contextual links are some of the best. Now in case you're wondering on what kind of anchor text you should use, I got your back. Based on numerous tests, we found that a varied target anchor text is the best strategy. So use target anchor links, but never the same one. How many supporting articles do you need to write? That's a good question. My suggestion is to create at least four, depending on the difficulty of the pillar page you want to rank and then keep increasing over time. As long as your content is good, you're answering questions correctly, and you're building some quality links, you'll continue to climb over time. We rolled this strategy out and we were eventually able to hit page one for a 52,000 search volume keyword. If you want to see a full breakdown of how to create topical authority, I left a link to the text version of this case study in the description. So make sure to check it out after you watch this video. Next, you're going to want to make sure that all of your articles match the search intent of the queries. What does this mean? There's four main categories of search queries. Informational search is when people are looking for information, like how to scratch on turntables. Navigational search is when people are trying to find a URL like Mixmag login. Commercial investigation is familiar for affiliates. People are looking for review content, like best turntables. And transactional SERPs are all about purchasing, like buy Pioneer turntables. I'm not really sure where the hub fits into this, but let's move on. You want to make sure that when you're trying to rank something, you're giving Google the type of content that they expect to see. For example, for the search best turntables, a commercial investigation keyword, everyone in the top 10 is a review type listicle article. You want to do the same thing if you want to rank for this keyword. Our client was having an issue with this, so we went through the following checklist to guide us through the content audit process. First, determine which of the main intent categories is the page trying to serve. Next, is Google ranking blog posts, product pages, home pages? Next, what kind of content is on the page? Is it a text-based article, mostly images, 
images? How about videos? Lastly, how long is the content? Is Google rewarding 500 word content and you have 5,000? In fact, if you see any discrepancies, start to make adjustments. After that, you wanna do a huge on-page SEO audit on every page on your site. Many SEOs get obsessed with new content production, but they neglect the importance of updating existing content. Every word and page title and meta matters. Think about it like this. Your website is like a boat, and if you wanna go fast, you need to make sure there's absolutely zero holes in your sale. Here's an effective crash course on on-site SEO, starting with title tags. This is what you fill out in your typical SEO plugin like Yoast and it shows up in the search result just like this. Here's my basic rules for this. Put your main keywords towards the front. Don't repeat keywords. Try to make it engaging to be able to steal some clicks. Be descriptive of what they're gonna click on and use a maximum of 65 characters. Here's an example of a bad title tag. It repeats keywords and the main keyword isn't towards the front. Here's a good one. Main keyword is towards the front, no repeats, and a bit of click optimization at the end. Next, you optimize your headings. These are your H2s and H3s that you put on the page. They're used to help people find what they're looking for. They're also used to help search engines understand how the main topic is broken down into subtopics. Optimizing your H2s also helps with Google Passage Ranking, which is already live. Here's my heading optimization advice. Have only a single H1 on your page that is used for the main title of your article. I use pretty much the same rules as title tag optimization here, but I make my H1 a bit different by tossing in some alternate secondary keywords. H2s and so forth are used for your subtopics and long tail keywords. If your main keyword is how to lose belly fat, this is where you go into exercise exercise or belly fat miss. Having solid H2s is also really handy for stealing featured snippets. Here's a featured snippet for one of my favorite dinner topics, Can Birds Eat Rice? Which you can see was taken directly from the H2 and topic underneath it. After that, optimize your meta description. Meta descriptions don't help you rank, but they do help you get clicks. Take a look at these meta descriptions from your new favorite keyword, Can Birds Eat Rice? Which one draws your eye more? Here's some tips for optimizing your meta description. Add keywords which Google will automatically highlight in bold, and this draws the eye. Once again, be engaging. And here's a pro tip, leave a cliffhanger at the end, something like find out if you've qualified for a free dot dot dot. A free what? Oh my God, I need to click now to find out. The final on-site optimization to consider is your URLs. Here's some tips on optimizing your URLs. Add keywords in your URLs, but try not to repeat words in order to avoid over-optimization. Lastly, keep it short and sweet. Here's an example of a good one, and here's an example of a bad one. One more thing to note, don't bother changing your URLs unless they're downright terrible. Changing URLs can result in site structure issues like broken links, so really only mess with them when they're garbage. Bear in mind we just scratched the surface of on-site SEO. If you want a mega guide on this stuff, I left a link in the description to my free evergreen on site SEO guide. Now before we move on to the technical SEO fixes you should do for your site, I want to talk about EAT. EAT stands for Expertise, Authoritiveness, and Trust. It's part of Google's Quality Rater Guidelines, which they give as rating criteria to their manual review team. Google wants the content they rank to come from trustworthy, subject matter experts on the given topic. And to determine EAT, they look for certain signals on your website or lack thereof. No one really knows what Google is able to detect algorithmically at this point, but we have some ideas is, and our client was severely lacking in this department. Here's a list of things we fixed that you should take a look at too. Keep your content as up to date as possible. No one cares about your best turntables of 2020 article anymore. Cite external sources of where you're getting your facts from. Healthline does a great job of this and you already know how well they're doing. Have a complete about page that shows off your credentials. And lastly, make it easy for your visitors to contact you. Real businesses make it very easy to get in touch with them. So add your contact information to your site. Now put on your nerd hat because it's time to look at technical SEO, but I'm going to lay things out super easy for you. Bear in mind, I'm not going to be giving you a full breakdown of technical SEO right now. It's beyond the scope of this video and I already wrote a mega guide on that with downloadable checklists and you can check it out after this video. So instead I'm going to focus on the two major issues that my client had, which you need to take a look at for your site too. The first was what's known as crawl depth. Think of your homepage as the most important page on your site. It has the most links and gets crawled the most by Google. You don't want Google to have to spelunk into the seventh layer of hell in order to find your most important pages. You want to make sure that your core pages are no further than three clicks away from your homepage. Our client had 100 pages with a crawl depth of four or more. How do we figure this out? Screaming Frog displays this in their site structure tab. 
Once you do a standard crawl with Screaming Frog, it'll spit this report out. I left some instructions on how to do this in the full case study down in the description. Next, if you're not putting structured data on your site, also known as schema, you're really missing out. Schema helps the search engine figure out what your content is about. Instead of making Google have to work hard and guess that this is a product review page, you can just straight up tell Google. And when you make life easy for Google, they make life easy for you. As a final bonus, proper schema helps you get SERP features such as FAQs and review stars. Here's some important schema that we added to our client site that you should consider adding too. Add organization schema to your home and about pages to give Google a better understanding about what this website is for. Then add breadcrumb list schema to your core landing pages to help Google understand this page's position within your site hierarchy. Article schema can be used to provide more information on who wrote your articles and what they're about. And how to schema is great for telling Google that it's instructional content that they're reading. If you've never set up schema before, it's not as bad as it sounds. First head over to the free Google Structured Data Markup Helper tool. Select the type of content you want to generate schema for. Most of the time it's going to be an article. Then, one by one, start to highlight the parts in your article that correspond to the markup parameters you're looking for. Like here, where it's asking for the name of the article, I just highlight the name, and then the helper updates it automatically. When you're done, press Create HTML to dump out the code and add it to your site. And don't forget to check out how things look with the Google Rich Results test tool. Here's what it looks like when everything is good to go. And here's what it looks like when you're messed up. All right, now it's time to talk about every SEO's favorite subject, and that's backlinks. Don't worry, I didn't forget about it. Link building is a big topic, and I have a whole playlist dedicated to it on my channel. And right now, I'll hone in on two strategies that we leverage for our client that I suggest you look at for yourself right now. The first is anchor text optimization. When you link to a URL, most of the time you're creating a text link. The underlying text that becomes the link is known as your anchor text. And anchor text is a pretty good indicator of relevance. Google can pretty much assume that the receiving page of this link is about profitable niches. And lo and behold, it is. You can use a tool like Ahrefs to look at the links and their anchor text going to the URLs on your site. If it looks like this, like our clients were, then you're severely under-optimized. You can see that because there's no target descriptive anchor text here. It's all brand and URL anchor text. It's doing nothing to indicate the relevance of the page. This is supposed to have an anchor text profile that looks like this, which is clearly indicative of what the page is about. Am I right? The thing is, you don't want to get carried away with this. Everything needs to look natural. And you want to do some analysis on your competitors to find that proper balance of descriptive versus over-optimized anchor text. Our client was definitely under-optimized, so starting a link building campaign with target anchor text in mind was the play. And this is what we did straight away. To start this campaign, we started to take a look at the links that our competitors have that we didn't have. We wanted ice cream too. Ahrefs Link Intersect tool makes this super easy. You put in your competitors at the top here, then your site at the bottom, and it dumps out all these jerks that link to your competitors and not you. You're going to want to sort through them to figure out which links you want and which links you don't want. If you want my full process, check out my video on link vetting, but at the very least, get links from sites with at least 500 traffic per month. 1,000 is better. After that, you need to start collecting emails so you can start reaching out to these sites and pitching them for links. You can do that manually by digging through the site's contact pages and trying to find emails. Or you can use a tool like Hunter, which I'll review later on my channel. Once you have those emails, you can start outreaching with a free tool like GMAS. But we prefer Pitchbox because it's a billion times better for agencies. Ultimately, our link building efforts paid off and we built hundreds of links for this site, which helped achieve this overall result of a 3,000% increase in traffic. If you want results like these, apply the techniques in this video. Or have us take a look for free by heading over to thesearchinitiative.com and using the form here at the bottom for a free consultation. And make sure to subscribe for more case studies and videos like these.